Alan dear students, I'm glad to see you all again in our lectures course and today we're going to discuss a very important topic, it's about pain and a little bit about headaches. So what is pain for you? If you pay your attention on a definition from the World Health Organization, the pain is unpleasant feeling and emotional experience associated with real or potential tissue damage or described in a term such as damage. Anyway, if we're going to talk about pain, we need to divide it on some group. There are a lot of uh, classifications that exist in the world. Uh, and different principles to divide the pain. The main principle is anatomical localization of the pain. It's the answer on a, on a question, where do you feel the pain or what place is painful for the patient. Due to this classification, we may find such kind of pain like cephalgia, cervical gear, dorsal gear, lumbardinia, uh, abdominal, uh, abdominal pain, and so on. Another uh, very important classification is due to intensity of the pain. Usually we divide it on mild, moderate, and severe pain. Except of that, we can divide the pain due to pathological mechanism of appearance. Uh, there are Two main mechanisms of appearance of pain is nociceptive and neuropathic uh, way to appear the pain, and of course it can be mixed. And the last position in our classification, it's about duration of the pain. It can be acute, subacute, and chronic. I will talk about meaning of the pain we can divide it on somatogenic pain uh, it's syndromes which are formed by direct tissue damage because of inflammation trauma ischemia and so on and another it's neurogenic syndromes they are caused by my morphological function changes in a peripheral and central nerve system, so it's a problem with the nerve tissue and ability of nerve tissue to send the information about real condition of our tissue. So, pathological type of pain first, Type it's nociceptive pain and occurs when the pain receptors are irritated in the tissue which is damaged. So it's a problem with receptors. Somatic pain uh, occurs when the pain receptors of uh, superficial and deep tissue are irritated. It's like a receptor from the skin, bones, muscles, conjunctive tissue, and so on. And visceral pain. Visceral pain caused by the irritation of internal pain receptors, which are localized in, in our internal organs. For example, I don't know, pleura. And another part of our classification is neuropathic pain. Uh, neuropathic pain caused by structure damage or nerve cell dysfunction of central or peripheral uh, nerve system, uh, namely those parts of the nerve system that are involved in a management per perception or modulation of the pain. And it, anyway, it can be mixed type of pain, which uh, includes combination of any type of those pain appearance types of the pain. As we told, it can be acute pain, 
and first of all, it's a signal of some kind of tissue damage, some kind of acute damage, which is based on a local pathological process related, for example, to trauma, inflammation, infection, and so on. Acute pain is in, it's a symptom, and it's reduced by analgetics always. So it's the easiest way to treat the pain, if you talk about acute pain, is to use analgetics. Chronic pain, it's another type of pain. Uh, we will talk about chronic pain if it lasts more than three months and exceeds the time required to cure the particular type of a pain. Uh, so it means that it's longer than the usual period of tissue healing. Chronic pain often takes uh, on a few features of an independent disease, which is manifested not only by pain, but also by vegetative, emotional, and mental disorders with the formation of disaptative pain behavior. What kind of cause of the pain do you know? First of all, it's a jam damage of a tissue and any causes for irritation of the tissue. It can be also an inflammation or any kind of inflammatory process, as well as acute inflammation or chronic inflammation. The reason for the pain also can be an ischemia. Uh, it also divided on an acute and chronic ischemia. Another cause for the pain is a tissue compressor. The tissue can be compressed by edema, by foreign body, by tumors, hematoma, broken bones, or something like that. And another way to pain appearance is irritation or damage of peripheral nerves, plexus, or damages of central nerve system. It's so called neuropathic and central pain. And a very common cause for the pain is psychogenic disorders, it's perception of a pain. Sometimes even if the reason for the pain doesn't exist in our body. So anyway, pain is a personal experience. It's something where the person feels and describes and you have no test for measure the pain because on the, uh, all uh, feelings, it's up to a person. So how we should understand that the person feels the pain and how severe does the pain feel the person? For those, usually we used special scales and we ask our patient to divide the severity of the pain due to the scale. The most popular is a 0 10 scale of pain severity. You ask your patient to uh, give a mark for his pain and choose a mark from the 0 to 10. Usually we don't use a description of this pain because it's sometimes a person uh, try to lie to you and if he has description he would choose another severity. That's why in our real life we usually use some kind of scales without description. And the most popular ones uh, is three of the scales. Uh, you may use the visual analog pain scale like here. You may ask just to pay a point in a place, how severe does the pain bother the person? Like, if it's not very painful, let him put it like here, or maybe if it's very painful, choose, choose the level. Uh, more graduated, it's scale of 10 points pain intensity when we choose intensity of the pain, or we gave the scale where we put like uh, ranges of pain, so from no pain to unbearable pain, and we ask our person to 
put a point in a place where he thinks that his pain is located due to the scalp. And when we know all about pain, the most popular pain in our life, it's a headache. Uh, given the wide range of uh, different headaches and migraine types, systematically classified and diagnosed them have been deemed essential to aid proper classification management. Uh, usually we use the third edition of classification for classificate the pain to different types and to make a diagnosis. There are two main categories of headaches due to this classification. It's a primary headaches and secondary headaches. Uh, while a primary headache is a disorder of its own, a secondary headache is only a symptom of an uh, underlying condition. Primary headaches can be further categorized into four main types. It's migraine, it's tensor type headache, it's trigeminal automatic cerebral gear, such as cluster headache, and other primary headache disorders. If you look closely on a primary headache, we may find some kind of difference between of them. The most popular and the most common one, it's a tensor type headache. Here is a special localized localization of the pain, and we also may describe the pain quality, like with a special words like knocking pain, it's always about migraine or knife pain if you talk about cluster pain. Uh, previously, we talked about severity of pain, and if we took like general range of answer of, of person, normally the tension type headache it's not very severe pain. It close to mild. I'm sorry, it close to mild pain, and the most severe pain it's cluster pain. Except of that, you need to pay attention to the duration of the pain on a frequency of its appearance and unique symptoms which associated with uh, those types of the pain, like those ones. Uh, meanwhile, secondary headaches can be attributed to events like trauma or injury, cranial or vascular disorder infections or substance use of such, uh, such as uh, medication of rules headaches. Unlikely, unlike primary headaches, secondary headaches are symptoms of under, underlying condition. Uh, also, secondary headaches are uncommon. Uh, diagnosis them is important as timely intervention can be critical for treating of potential fatal underlying condition. Usually, patients with secondary headaches uh, will have red flag syndrome symptoms uh, in their patient's history that should be aid informing the diagnosis. The most popular and the most frequent type of secondary headache. It's headache which attributed to infections. It's headache which attributed to trauma. Uh, it's a uh, vascular disorder such as uh, arterial hypertension or another vascular disease. Uh, except for that, it's very frequent uh, when the person has second secondary headache attributed to a physical uh, uh, psych uh, psychiatric disorder, sorry, psychiatric disorders and so on. So if we look on a range, how frequent does a different type of headaches is a purse in a general population, we may see that the most common one is a tensor, tensor 
type of headache and migraine and secondary uh, secondary uh, types of headaches are not very common but they always show us salmonal disease like symptom for salmonal disease And that's why we were going to talk about the most popular tensor type headache. Tensor type headache typically is uh, not as severe as migraine. Uh, it's often a dull, bilateral, mild to moderate headaches, pain without other striking features. Uh, the infrequent episodic from the TTH is through to be experienced by almost everyone at one, at one point or, or other and generally does not require any medical attention. Uh, frequently episodic TTH uh, on the uh, other hand is more Dis disabling and may warrant medication, whereas uh, the rare chronic TTN is severely dis disabling, usually leading to a greatly decreased quality of life of a person. Uh, here on a picture you may see the typical localization of the pain and uh, steps of progressing of this pain and reason for its appearance. Another common time of primary headache, it's a migraine. Uh, the two major types of migraine uh, are appears in a person's life. Usually it's migraine without aura or with aura. Headaches of migraine without hour usually last from 4 to 72 hours. Typical features included unnatural uh, pulsating headache of moderate or severe intensity associated with uh, nausea, vomiting, and sensitivity to a live sound or smell. Migraine with hour starts with our symptoms preceding the actual headache lasting up to usually one hour. Both of these migraine types are characteristic as episodic migraine based on the numbers of headaches, uh, headaches day per month. If a migraine occurs on a 15 or more days per month for more than three months, it's instead classified as a chronic migraine. Also, chronic migraine is less common than episodic migraine, uh, affecting approximately one tenth of this uh, of all migraines. It's extremely disabling and severe impacts of patient quality of life. And here on a picture, you also can see the main migraine triggers. Pay your attention on the first one, it's lack of sleep, it's chronic stress, it's using too much of caffeine and so on. And the main symptoms of migraine, I hope that you will know it here. And the typical localization of uh, the pain, it's like a half of our head. So, if we will talk about headaches, what are we going to do? First of all, we need to understand, is it primary or secondary? So, primary, usually episodic headaches. If we're going to talk about secondary, usually it's constant headaches. Then we need to understand if it's secondary, uh, if it's secondary headaches, we need to understand if it has red flag symptom or not. If there is no red flag symptoms, we need to divide it on acute 
situation or it will be like a symptom for acute disease such as sinusitis, dental abscess, glaucoma, traumatic brain injury, um, some kind of different acute situations and traumas. Or it can be chronic. Uh, chronic is usually caused by using of special drugs. Uh, usually it's overdose of analgetics. Uh, it's so-called an analgetic induced headache and substance withdrawal. How are we gonna understand uh, and, and what we need to do on if it's primary disorder? First of all, we need to make questions to our patient and make the examination of the patient. We need to pay attention on headaches, alarms, flux. If they present, we exclude secondary headache using a uh, appropriate test if it's necessary. If it's no, we uh, consider primary headaches. Uh, are there typical features or no? If they are typical, we also again think about uh, secondary headache. So, diagnosis of the primary headaches is always a diagnosis of excluding. The most critical as, uh, aspects of headache diagnosis is history taken. Primary headaches, as I told previously, it's it's a disorder uh, uh, not diagnosed of it's a diagnosis of exclusion, but rather are based on support features of clinical history and physical examination. Uh, the presence of atypical features on a red flag concern from a secondary tapes. What are you going to pay attention at? First of all, on duration of headaches, of nature of it, of uh, how many episodes for a month, week, or day the person has for severity of headaches, for associated features, and, and other additional symptoms. I talk a lot of time about red flags, but what is it? It's important to, uh, when you want to find the red flags, it's very important to be in with open-ended question when obtaining a headache history, with, uh, which should include frequency, duration, location, quality, severity, associated symptoms, and comorbidities. Uh, including head and neck symptoms and hormonal status. If we name a red flex, it will be its so-called snoop classification. So we need to find information about some kind of systemic disorders. We need to f um, find if the patient has neurologic disorders. We talk about one set or sudden appearance of headaches. It's always a risk of some kind of emergency situation. Uh, it's about age of a person, pattern changes, pregnancy, history, and so on. So here is the most common red flags. As a dentist, you need to know the signals of a danger in a diagnostic of headaches. It's always a combination of headaches and neurological disorders like um, ataxia, coordination disorders, uh, uh, paresis, uh, uh, appearance and ability for movement, asymmetry of people's tender reflexes, and so on. First of all, you need to think about stroke or some kind of uh, leading side of the brain, and so on. So it's acute neurological situation. Uh, another sign and signal its presence of other pathological symptoms such as fever, arterial hypertension, weight loss, long-term cough, lymphadenopathy, runny nose, or difficulty in breathe. 
In that case, we need to exclude infective disease, arterial hypertension, and of course, tumors of the brain or nerve systems. High blood pressure develops a few hours, days, or weeks after head trauma. It's always a severe situation which needs to be treated immediately. The onset of progressive and ever increasing pain syndrome, both headaches and ultra localization can be like a side for cancer process, especially according to a patient's normal pain pills do not help like suggest me something else. And a cures of a headache during the facial color force, sneezing on our normal situation of the life. That's the main point that you need to pay your attention on. And remember that not each headache needs to be treated by medicine. Sometimes you just need to rest. And that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, you may write it to me or give it to your teacher. Have a good day. See you.